On today's show, we are discussing how your role as a business owner is going to evolve over time. My question for you is, what was your first hire when you started your business? Or if you're a new business owner, what will your first hire be? We're gonna talk about roles inside an organization and give you a few tips along the way with running an organizational chart to knowing exactly what positions entrepreneurs run in their business. Hey guys, today we are talking about the evolution of your role as a business owner. As a business owner, stuff changes obviously frequently. You know, as a one-man operation, you've got the whole organization to control. And as things change, as you hire, as you kind of evolve, as you grow, as you bring on more staff, things, things like that, your role starts. So, yep. or your role changes, I should say. So let's go through kind of maybe the four steps or the kind of the, the four growth patterns uh, that work. Uh, we're starting with, you know, day one, you're wearing every hat. <laughs> yeah, startup time, you are wearing every single hat and half of them are things you didn't even anticipate. Like whatever your business might be, you know that you're gonna be doing the job, the block and tackle, the transactional stuff of that business. If you're a lawyer, you're lawyering. If you're a lender, you're doing loans, et cetera. But what you don't realize is that oh, you're now also like the administrative person and you're an accountant and you have to be you know enough about the legal aspects of your business. All these kinds, you might even become a web developer like Jason did when we started, like all kinds of stuff that you didn't anticipate and that is how it goes yeah. at startup time. And you know, for instance, if you need a, a form you need to, you know, to bill a client. Hey, you're putting that form together. If you need this, yeah. you need to do this. You know, you come, you come across things. You realize you're the person to do it, and that's a good thing, though, because there's nothing wrong with learning everything inside your business. So when you hire somebody, you can, you can train them properly and kind of teach them, teach them maybe the way that that's, that that works. So one quick tip. Uh, we're hoping to give you a, a bunch of quick tips along the way in this, in this video. Yep. And as always, guys, comment below if you have some tips or tricks that you've done inside your business that would benefit from the community here. So one quick tip that we did was we actually put together an organizational chart. Um, and it was anything from like a CEO, a CFO, a manager, a sales guy, in our case, you know, loan officers, accounting, yep. stuff like that. And we put one as of today, like when we started the business, and then we put one down the road, like a projected one of hires and things like that. And you may say, well, I don't an organizational chart I'm doing everything well exactly well guess what yeah. you're gonna do an organizational the chart not the people yeah. necessarily you're gonna, yeah you're gonna do an organizational chart of everything inside your organization you need and you're gonna write your name next to every single one of them <laughs> right. and that's just it right. you know your accounting your bookkeeping your you know your marketing your sales so just a kind of a quick tip and and the reason why I like that is it really opens your eyes of oh wow I'm really doing all these things on a regular basis or who do I go for help with these and th so that you know so that's actually really cool to set up but it's also really cool as you grow and as you transition into hiring employees creating software virtual assistants and things like that because there's it's pretty enjoyable to be honest with you to go back to that organizational chart and add someone else's name attached to a task and align them with with that proper role and they're the directly responsible person for you yeah and, and that's pretty much uh, step number two as you are making your first hire second third you're going to be assigning people to those departments on your organizational chart that you've already laid out. And get rid of the most painful ones first and the, the ones that you are not as good at. For many, many business owners, that's a bookkeeper or accountant. Um, so that can be one of your first hires and administrative people and telephone stuff. Um, so yeah, I would say that as that's happening in step number two, you're also narrowing your focus and concentrating on things that you are better at. Yep. Right. Um, for, like for us, that's some of the technical real estate stuff that goes on, and it's also marketing and sales and other things that we enjoy and we think we're pretty good at. Yeah, obviously, just like any, any, and one of the big things with us is, I was really, really, really kind of excited and motivated to get rid of some of those items. And you get rid of those, some of those items by a few different things. 100%. You hire an internal employee, you put a virtual assistant in place, an outsourced person, uh, a consultant maybe that runs that department. Like sure. we have an IT department on our organizational chart. Well, we're not doing IT stuff here. Um, nobody inside our organization. We have a consultant for that, or just straight software that runs by by itself, uh, automated. So th think about those things I, as you're doing them. And we color coded things. And I remember looking back. I think I was like the color green or something. And I remember like. Half of it was green and half of it whatever color you were. So I was, let's just say green and blue. And then over time, my green kind of disappeared and disappeared and disappeared. And all yep. of a sudden it went from like 
you know, creating a banner or a website to creating an internet ad to this to this to all of a sudden like the higher the higher level visionary owner types of roles. So it, that that that's ex that's exciting for sure. All right, step number three. It is our belief that a business owner is always going to be involved in growth, meaning sales and marketing. Um, a lot of that department is why we started a business of our own in the first place, right? Because we want to sell stuff in our product and we want to uh, support it and push it out to the world and stand behind it and everything else. So I don't think that should ever go away for the owner. Yeah, and keep in mind, most small business owners are salespeople to begin with. That's like they're usually their number one trade and they're starting a business the because they too. feel they can do it better than their competition yep. or they want to do it their own way. So a lot of small business owners have the the skill set of being a salesperson first. That's not everybody, you know. There's, you know, that's not everybody. But a lot of the times, it's a sales mentality of, hey, I'm selling for somebody else. Why don't I just sell for myself and sure. and and do it my way? So I think that's important to, uh, you know, to, to understand and grasp. Yeah, to always keep that mindset and to always be evolving yourself in terms of your growth game. I, I, and I will say, as a lot of this goes, as a lot of this transcribes, you're starting with. Um, a lot of just transactional stuff at the beginning, like you're doing every little transactional stuff um, of, of every role, like you're in, involved in every role, the, the nuts and bolts of everything, sure. uh, the block and tackle of everything. But as this, this evolves, like we've been talking about, you're removing yourself from, from a lot of those day-to-day -day operation stuff and working on kind of the higher level stuff, either you know the high level sales stuff or the growth visionary, high level marketing, business building activities, which, you know, hopefully it doesn't scare a lot of people because in reality, if you have a successful business, that's really what you should be doing. Agreed. All right, moving on to number four, which is kind of in some ways the opposite of number three. Um, like we were <laughs> saying, uh, business owners are, are very motivated and want to be involved in growth. Now, number four might not be every business owner's favorite thing in the world, and it's HR, managing the people close to you. And whether you like it or not, I think that's always going to be a part of it. See, that's something that business owners don't really say to themselves. It's like, I want to start a company because I want to hire and manage people. That's usually not the mindset, but that is absolutely part of it. Yeah. It absolutely is, right? Uh, and it's important, mm -hmm. and I believe that that, too, is forever going to be a part of your job description, forever a part of your role. It, just, it depends on the, the size of your business, but you know, a lot of our audience, a lot of us, a lot of our sphere are small business owners. And to be honest with you, just, just not enough room for middle management. If you had middle management that managed one tier, the next, the next, you could put HRs in yeah, place. But also, mind you, the middle management, you're still HR Agreed. for them. Agreed. But oh, you know, depending right. on depending on how how many tiers you have, I mean, everyone pretty much in our organization, there's there's no kind of hierarchy chain. Everyone, there's usually one person per department, right? I sure. mean, for in instance, small business like it, you know, if, depend, if you had, you know, obviously. 20 sales guys on your team and you had a sales manager, you're managing the sales manager, you're not managing those 20 sales guys, but it also depends on your size of your business. And you know, so that has a lot to do that has a lot to do with it as well is, you know, if you have department heads and you're managing them, I mean, you're right. That still falls under HR, but you know, most small business owners, most real estate investment uh, development companies, a lot of real estate agents, uh, law firms, things like that, like they're not gigantic or the small business ones. Like they're not absolutely gigantic. So Yes, you're involved in it, but the degree will just depend on how big your organization is. Yeah. So yeah, really over time, the, the evolution is a positive thing for sure. I mean, focusing on what you're good at, getting rid of some of the stuff that you're not, but yet you still are grounded in every aspect of your business and you know how it works. And I think that really makes people uh, better overall business people and people because it's, it's challenging. Yeah. Right? I mean, e easy, easy tip is, you know, as, as you're growing, as you're making more money, as your business is, is building, try to carve down the, the lowest 20% and figure out a way to, you know, mm -hmm. delegate, hire, outsource, whatever the, whatever the case is, you know, as you need somebody. And, you know, you'd be surprised. You know, a lot of staff members have, you know, really good at what they do and probably can do a lot more than you would even expect going into it. Uh, so, you know, when you do hire hire that person, you know, maybe your first hire is a bookkeeper or an accountant or someone like that, but maybe they can overlap into some other things or help out with other stuff. You know, all of a sudden you go from like a one-man operation or two-man operation to a third person right here and, you know, they can cover some additional weight. So, you know, over time as we've grown, we've had certain, certain staff members Play, you know, have multiple hats. You know, or sure. play play key key things because that's just what you do at a small business compared to a you know a gigantic business, a gigantic company. Yeah, for sure. Um, quick question for you guys: 
let me know what your first hire was and or what your next hire is going to be because I'm curious. I'm yeah, comment I want to hear from anyone. Comment below on that because that's yeah. always a common a common thing and you know, we feel like every time we've talked to somebody and they're about to hire the first person what we'd like to recommend, but I'm just curious everyone For out sure. there what they first use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully one, hopefully you guys found you know found this useful. As always, comment below with anything you have that you can share with the community. It's super, super, super helpful. Like, subscribe, share. Right back at you.